Hi, my name is Patrick Reagan. Welcome to the security where we discuss security with a focus on how it affects the computer and the services and resources that the computer connects to. In part 8, the video discusses social engineering attacks which everyone probably sees every day in their email and in everyday activities. Topics include shoulder surfing, tailgating, piggybacking, dumpster diving, impersonation, wireless evil twins, and phishing. For those who are going to take the a exam, there are practice questions at the end of the video. If you have not already, subscribe to the Pat Has Your Back channel. Social engineering is the tactic of manipulating, influencing, or deceiving a victim in order to gain control over a computer system or to steal personal and financial information. It uses psychological manipulation to trick users into making security mistakes or give away sensitive information. Social engineering is effective because it relies on human tendency to trust, fear, or oblige to orders. Sometimes it depends on that person have a basic desire to be helpful. Social engineering is aimed at the weakest link in security, the people. Keep in mind that social engineering is constantly changing and you never know what they'll use next. For an organization, since awareness is key to avoid social engineering traps, regular awareness training is paramount. Remember, vigilance and skepticism are the best defense against social engineering attacks. Trust your instincts and verify before sharing sensitive information. Some common tactics used in social engineering are posing as a trusted brand where scammers impersonate well-known companies or brands that victims trust. By creating fake websites or messages resembling those of major brands, they trick victims into following instructions reflexively without proper precautions. Phishing is when cybersecurity sends deceptive emails, messages, or calls pretending to be legitimate entities such as banks, government agencies, or coworkers. They aim to extract sensitive information or manipulate victims into taking harmful actions. Pretexting is a technique that attackers create a fabricated scenario or pretext to gain victims' trust. For example, they might pose as a colleague seeking urgent help, pose as a family member who is stranded or desperately needing help, or as a service provider requesting account details. Baiting is when cybersecurity offers enticing bait such as free software, discounts, or prizes to lure victims into downloading malicious files or visiting compromised websites. Quid pro quo is when attackers promise something in return for information. For instance, they might claim to be conducting a survey and offer a reward for participation. Shoulder surfing is the practice of someone attempting to steal sensitive data by watching over a person's shoulder as they're using mobile phone, laptop, desktop computer, or another device in an attempt to see private information including passwords, pins, or other sensitive information. This also includes typing a security code into a keypad, payment terminal, or ATM. Shoulder surfing can be done direct observation, cameras, or recording devices. You also need to be careful if you're using a computer near a windows where someone may see the screen from a distance using binoculars, telescopes, or special magnifying cameras. To prevent shoulder surfing, you need to be aware of your surroundings, use privacy filters. A privacy filter is a thin piece of plastic that is placed over the monitor or display panel in order to prevent viewing the content from an angle. And then keep your monitor out of sight, including keeping away from windows and hallways. Tailgating uses an authorized person to gain unauthorized access to a building or a restricted area by following a person who is authorized. Piggybacking is when an authorized user gains access to a restricted area and helps an unauthorized user enter the site. For example, you hold the door open for someone that was nearby and you let them in. When discussing security, it's not always best to be polite. To prevent tailgating and piggybacking, you need to use physical barriers such as turnstiles, access control visibles, or man traps. Use a video monitoring system that is actively monitored and for logging of intrusion. Use sensors that count the number of people entering and leaving the premises and compares to the number of access credentials used. Security awareness training for your users detailing the dangers of tailgating and piggybacking 
in the urging of asking who they are and why are they there and showing the proper identification. Dumpster diving is the practice of extracting information from large commercial, residential, industrial, construction, and trash containers to gather valuable information, including confidential and proprietary information. The information from dumpster diving can be used in other social engineering attacks in the future, including impersonation and spear phishing emails. Dumpster diving also includes rummaging through discarded documents, hard drives, and the hard drive's deleted files. Some information gathered including key people in an organizational chart, telephone numbers, email addresses, delivery schedules, orders, and quarterly reports. To protect yourself against dumpster diving is to establish a clear data disposal policy, establish storage media deletion and destruction, enforce a data retention policy, use a shredder for physical documents before discarding, and consider using a reputable third-party paper shredder destruction service. Keep trash in a safe location where it should not be easily accessible to unauthorized individuals and consider putting locks on the dumpsters in similar containers. Educate Employees A personation is when someone that pretends to be someone he or she is not. For example, they say that they're from the help desk or a representative from or for an executive or a company that you do business with. The personator may try to access the building or restricted areas. Information used in a personation may be gathered from dumpster diving, company websites, and sites about the company including LinkedIn. To protect against impersonation attacks, you need to educate employees on how to recognize and respond to impersonation attempts, phishing scams, and other fraudulent activities. Alert employees in real time that notify employees of a impersonation attack. Ensure that you check people for proper identification. Consider using MFA to verify a person's entity when accessing systems and accessing restricted areas. Install security software to detect and block suspicious activities including anti-phishing technology. Perform regular phishing tests. Take down fraudulent infrastructures that may be used by fraudsters, including malicious and fake websites, domains, or communication channels. Stay vigilant, stay informed, and continually adapt your security measures to combat involving threats. Remember that emerging technologies such as AI generated deepfakes. An evil twin attack occurs when an attacker sets up a fake Wi-Fi access point hoping that unsuspected users will connect to it instead of a legitimate network. Often an access point is configured to look like an existing network which could have similar SSID and captive portal or a Wi-Fi hotspot. Wireless evil twins could overpower the existing access points. When a user connects to a wireless evil twin, they could create a man-in-the-middle attack to steal data or direct users to fake sites with malicious content or to steal credentials or other confidential information. To protect against evil twin attacks, you need to use a VPN, avoid unsecured Wi-Fi networks, stick to HTTPS websites, enable MFA so that if your credentials are stolen, you will not gain access without the second authentication factor. Avoid logging into private accounts such as banks, shopping, or email while connected to public Wi-Fi. If you need to use public Wi-Fi, consider using your own personal HubSpot. Turn off Auto Connect so that you will not automatically connect to open Wi-Fi networks. Phishing is a cyber threat where scammers attempt to deceive individuals by posting as trustworthy sources. They use various communication methods including email, chat programs, text messages, phone calls, and more. The goal is to trick victims into revealing sensitive information such as passwords and personal identifiable information, or PII. These attacks send countless fake emails and texts globally, hoping to exploit unsuspecting people and gain access to their bank accounts or credit cards. The steps of phishing attack are Target Selection the attacker identifies their target, whether an organization or an individual, and devises strategies to collect data from the attack. Creation of fake content. Fishers create fake emails or phony web pages to send messages that lure data from their victims. Trustworthy appearance. 
The attacker sends messages that appear trustworthy to the victims initiating the attack. Data collection. Once deployed, Fishers monitor and collect the data victims provide on the fraudulent web pages. To protect against a phishing attack, you must familiar yourself with the common warning signs including unsolicited messages, unfamiliar greetings or tones, grammar and spelling errors, a sense of urgency such as services will be shut off or the account is locked, suspicious links or attachments, requests for personal information, inconsistencies in email addresses or links, and unusual requests or alerts. This also includes claiming you've won something. Before clicking on links, move the mouse pointer over the link to see where the link really points to and avoid clicking on links that are shortened URLs such as tinyurl.com and bit.ly that hide the destination link. When viewing emails is not the time to be click happy. You should even treat QR codes that are used to open links as suspicious since you cannot see the link that the QR code points to. QR codes are often used with mobile devices. You can see from this example, the domain that the email was sent from looks suspicious. If you move the mouse cursor to the link without clicking it, you can see that the link also looks suspicious. Here's another example supposedly from Netflix. Looking at the domain that the email was sent from, it was not sent from Netflix. And the links are also suspicious. For this email account, I have never had a Netflix subscription. This is an example where the hacker just sent out this email to many people, hoping just to catch a few. Here's another example for a Zelle transaction, which I never performed. Of course, you should check your banks that use Zelle to verify. Again, don't click on any of the links, including with the email. The domain was sent from Gmail, which I'm pretty sure that Zelle would not use. And the normal link and the unsubscribe links are suspicious. Here's another example where I got an email from Kay Fessel with an attachment. First question you should ask is, do you know Kay? And were you expecting her to send you an attached file? So let's say you know Kay and you deal with her on a regular or semi-regular basis. Ask yourself if this is the type of email that she would send to you. Let's say you do know K and you open the PDF file. When you open the PDF file, it prompts you to go to Dropbox. Why would anyone send you a PDF that only has a link to Dropbox when they could just send you the link directly? That is suspicious. If you hover over the link and click the link, you would expect to go to a box.com website, which it does not. Another huge flag. You should not go further. Let's say that you click the Office 65 account because you have a Microsoft account. Here looks like a convincing looking Microsoft site. Of course, the obvious is the link is not a Microsoft site, so this is a fake site. If you type in the email address or login name and password, you're sending the login name and password to the hacker. If you do not have a logon to Microsoft website, you should be redirected to HTTPS colon whack whack login dot Microsoft online dot com. If you are really familiar with Microsoft logins, Microsoft does not ask for the password on the same page that asks for your email address, but probably very few people really know this. As an IT professional, you should really understand phishing. The first link will give you some more information about phishing and will offer you a phishing quiz. The second link is Phishing for Dummies, which I recommend you to read. Spear phishing is a targeted email attack that pretends to come from a trusted sender. 
Unlike generic fishing, where attackers cast a wide net hoping to catch any victim, spear phishing focuses on specific individuals. The goal of spear phishing is to reveal or steal sensitive information such as logging your credentials, infect the target's device with malware, or trick employees to do an action such as wiring money. Examples include an attacker who claims to be the CEO could trick finance executives into sending money to their bank accounts or use fake invoices to trick accounts, payable employees into sending money to the attacker. Whaling refers to a specific type of phishing attack that targets high-profile individuals within an organization. These individuals are often referred to as the big fish, senior executives, CEOs, and CFOs, and other decision makers who wield significant authority and have access to critical data and financial assets. These types of attacks can result in data loss and financial loss. Voice phishing or vishing scammers call you to impersonate a valid person or company to deceive you. Remember, caller ID spoofing is common, which are often used as fake security checks or bank updates. They might redirect you from an automated message and mask their phone number. Fishers will try to keep you on the phone and urge you to take action. SMS phishing or schmishing, similar to vishing, which will imitate a valid organization, use urgency in a short text message to fool you. In the message, you usually find a link or phone number they want you to use. To protect yourself from phishing, make sure your computer operating system and software including the browser has the newest security updates. Make sure you use an up-to-date anti-malware package from a reputable company. Consider using anti-spam filter for the organization email. Use multi-factor authentication on your accounts, which adds an extra layer of protection. If you give your login information to a hacker, multi-factor authentication will prevent login without the second authentication factor. Don't click on suspicious links and don't open suspicious attachments. Keep an eye on your financial statements. Be wary of fake unsubscribe messages. Only respond to known and verified senders. If the email is suspicious or not expected, consider contacting the sender before opening attachments or clicking links. Don't use the contact information that is included in the email to contact the sender. Block pop-ups. Use a firewall. Avoid running devices in administrator or with administrative access. Perform regular updates and store the updates in a safe place. Make sure to conduct regular phishing awareness training and you should consider conducting phishing tests so that you can make employees more aware of your phishing attacks. Question. You connect to a wireless network at work and are tricked into providing login credentials for a website. What type of attack is this? Answer, Evil Twin. Question. You see a large increase in welling attacks in the industry. What can you do for your company to minimize the risk? Answer, make sure all employees complete anti-phishing training. Question. A user gets called from a bank requesting information to ensure the user's account is safe. Which type of attack is this? Answer, vishing. Question, which of the following attacks exploits vulnerabilities in human nature?
Answer, fishing. Question, which of the following does a privacy screen on a computer help prevent? Answer, shoulder surfing. For more information, visit these sites. In summary, social engineering is the tactic of manipulating, influencing, or deceiving a victim in order to gain control over a computer system or to steal personal and financial information. Social engineering is effective because it relies on the human tendency to trust, fear, or oblige to orders. Shoulder surfing is the practice of someone attempting to steal sensitive data by watching over a person's shoulder as they're using a mobile phone, laptop, desktop computer, or another device in an attempt to see private information including passwords, pins, or other sensitive information. Tailgating uses an authorized person to gain unauthorized access to a building or restricted area by following a person who is authorized. Piggybacking is when the authorized user gains access to a restricted area and helps an unauthorized user enter the site. Dumpster diving is the practice of extracting information from commercial, residential, industrial, construction, and trash containers to gather valuable information, including confidential and proprietary information, and information that can be used to exploit vulnerabilities, which can be used in other social attacks in the future, including impersonation and spear phishing emails. Impersonation is when someone that pretends to be someone who he or she is not. An evil twin attack occurs when an attacker sets up a fake Wi-Fi access point, hoping that unsuspected users will connect to it instead of a legitimate network. Phishing is a cyber threat where scammers attempt to deceive individuals by posing as trustworthy sources. To protect against a phishing attack, you must familiar yourself with common warning signs, including unsolicited messages, suspicious links or attachments, existing in email addresses or links. Spear phishing is a targeted email attack that pretends to come from a trusted sender. Whaling refers to a specific type of phishing attack that targets high-profile individuals within an organization. Voice phishing or vishing is scammers call you to impersonate a valid person or company to deceive you. SMS phishing or smishing is similar to vishing, which will imitate a valid organization using urgency in a short text message to fool you. Thank you for watching this video. The next video will be Security Part 9 Passwords. If you have not already, don't forget to subscribe to the Pat Hedgerback channel. Thank you.